Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today we're going to watch The Big Bang Theory to see how accurate all the science and technology scenes in the TV show really are. The whole universe was in a hot, dense state that nearly 14 billion years ago expansion started. Wait, the Earth began to cool, the autotrophs began to drool, Neanderthals developed tools, we built a wall. We built the pyramids, math, science, history, unraveling the mystery that all started with The Big Bang. Do you remember the grant proposal I submitted to the National Science Foundation to detect slow-moving monopoles at the magnetic North Pole? Hardly a day goes by when I don't think about it. <laughs> Aw, how nice. Well, space opened up at the last minute on the NSF expedition to the Arctic Circle. Wait a minute. <laughs> he offered to send you to the North Pole? Yes. In fact, he was quite enthusiastic. <laughs> He said, frankly, if I could send you tonight, I would. NSF stands for National Science Foundation, and if you're fortunate enough to get a grant from them to conduct your research, you should probably take that opportunity. It's pretty good. Professors and researchers are always looking for funding. No matter what stage you are, you are always looking for funding for your research. Most of the time, professors will go to universities, and they, they offer you a certain amount of grant money, but you're probably gonna want a little more than they're willing to offer you, so that's when you go to outside sources, just like the NSF. And depending on what you're asking for, they might give it to you, but if you want $10 million, you better put a really good proposal to see why you need that much money. There are other sources of funding that you can get than just the university and the National Science Foundation, although those are two really big ones, that those are their main purpose. Oftentimes, you can just go to, which is generally just a really old rich person because they often just give away their money since they don't care much about it. That's why a lot of like the scenes in like movies or TV shows, when people are asking for money, it's a lot of older rich people because they just give it away. Okay, well, do you want to go? Of course not. I'm a theoretical physicist, a career I chose in no small part because it's indoors. But... <laughs> If I'm able to detect slow-moving magnetic monopoles there, I'll be the scientist who confirms string theory. That's a very good point. I mean, uh, most people will choose that career because they don't have to go out into freezing cold or extreme temperatures. And majority of the research is actually done in your data analysis and data collection, depending on what it is you're doing. The professor or the lead of the research team doesn't always need to be at the location where the data is being collected. That's why we have grad students, <laughs> because you can just send them to the Arctic Circle and they'll know what to do to collect all the data where you can be back in California just in your really warm, comfortable office waiting for all the data to be sent back to you so you can analyze it and then write your paper. I mean, professors will generally be on site like every once in a while just to see like how things are going, but they're almost never in the data collection site if it's like outsourced. They're almost never there every day. I would like to propose that the three of you accompany me. To the North Pole? Yes. Is this just so we won't touch your stuff while you're away? <laughs> I'll admit that was a concern. <laughs> but the fact is, I'll need a support team, and the three of you are my first choice. Really? Well, there are others who might be more qualified, but the thought of interviewing them gave me a stomachache. <laughs> This mostly depends on how much money that you're asking for or like the location of where like there's, there's far more factors than just saying hey I need a team like you guys want to come along with me like there's way more that goes into it. Majority of it is just the money aspect. It's like how much travel is required, how much food, like how much equipment do you need to be moved. But if you can get enough professors to actually submit a grant for similar research to the NSF then you're all going to be clumped together and your team is chosen for you then that's just to save money for no other deeper reason. The more money you accept from outside sources, and whether it be the university or the NSF or any sort of donors, the more money you accept means the more constraints you have to adhere to. But if your research doesn't require a heavy amount of funding, and it's nearby, or if you don't actually have to travel very much, uh, you have the liberty of choosing your own team. It, it really just depends on how much money you're granted and what your budget is. Howard, this is big science. You could be the engineer who builds the equipment that puts us on the cover of magazines. I could also be the engineer who builds the crossbow that kills Sheldon. <laughs> You've got to be really careful about your choosing your team because if you're going to spend 
months on end in the Arctic Circle where there's nobody around you except just you and like three other guys in a small hut, you better make sure you guys get along because this is going to be a rough couple months otherwise. of this drill is to acclimate us to the use of tools in extreme temperatures such as we will face in the Arctic Circle. Where are your tools? Right here. <laughs> All right, team, open up your practice kits. As the university did not permit me to bring the actual equipment we'll be using to the Cheesecake Factory, because apparently I'm ridiculous, <laughs> I provided substitutes which will exercise your fine motor skills. I mean, we... <laughs> Sheldon is insane. <laughs> Definitely you're gonna need some sort of training if you're not used to being in like below zero degrees environments with wind and snow But you're not gonna get training from a dude who's lived in like Texas and California and warm weather his whole life Usually it's gonna be done by somebody who knows how to train people and it's done in a much different environment than this Even astronauts before they go into space they have to go through a whole training regimen to prepare them for what life is like in pretty much zero gravity any extreme environment change would require that you go through all of these sort of tests and it's gonna be really uncomfortable because if you're if it's that freezing where you are, like the food you eat is gonna be different, how you dress is gonna change, just I mean how you go to the bathroom is probably like there's so many things that you actually need to prepare for, which most people just take for granted because you're not going to the Arctic Circle or in outer space, but definitely it wouldn't be done in a in a freezer of a cheesecake factory. They would probably do it in a more controlled environment. This episode is definitely one of my favorites of the entire series because how they come up with this stuff is amazing. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Stay fresh and stay golden.